break this down for us. What exactly is this informant accused of? Give us the story. So essentially, this uh, informant's relationship with the FBI dates back to 2010. So he would have been about 30 at the time. He's now 43. Um, and over the course of that time, it apparently started off somewhat informing on business relationships, uh, supposedly, that he had. But then he claimed to have developed these uh, these uh, in, uh, these uh, these uh, interactions with these intelligence officials overseas, specifically foreign intelligence officials, including uh, with Russia. And he had this ongoing relationship with his FBI handler for a very long time and was giving them apparently information that was valuable, uh, at least until recently, that they believed was mostly uh, truthful. But um, back in 2020, he had planted this lie with the FBI that ended up cascading into becoming this major issue and becoming at the centerpiece of uh, the Republican uh, impeachment uh, push. Basically, here, if you've ever heard anything about $5 million bribes to Joe Biden or Hunter Biden, this guy's responsible for them. This is where that all originated. And it's something that Republicans really focused on, especially over the summer, trying to get these underlying FBI documents. And they really made it the centerpiece of their entire inquiry. In fact, you know, Jim Jordan really described this as the heart of the investigation. And James Comer also said that this was the key to this. This was what was going to unlock everything if they got that underlying document, got it out there, and began their investigation there. And really, all of that has just collapsed now because this was all just a lie that was fed way back in 2020 by someone who apparently had ties or at least self-proclaimed ties to Russian intelligence officials and has until very recently uh, been a really valuable informant for the FBI. So really just an incredible set of circumstances here where you have this lie that was planted back almost four years ago now that is now doing something I think that the Russians would be very excited about, would be, which is basically interrupting uh, the 2024 presidential campaign and causing these enormous impacts uh, for the sitting president of the United States. Right, this guy was in court yesterday and released with an ankle bracelet. Now prosecutors are saying they want him in jail. What changed? So essentially, they tried to get him locked up in Las Vegas, and the federal magistrate judge there said that he could be freed. They asked him also to stay that decision so that they could sort of appeal that, and uh, the, the magistrate judge there did not agree. So he was indeed uh, let free, as you sort of see on the screen there, covering himself up uh, pretty well as he left. And we really don't have a photo of what this individual uh, looks like ultimately. So now what's happening is because he was arrested after coming back from this international flight into Las Vegas, uh, that's where he landed. That's where he initially appeared in federal court. But ultimately, this case is going to come out of California. So basically, now the feds have gone and say, hey, to the federal judge who's actually going to handle this case in California, we'd like a review of this. Can you take a second look? Uh, maybe sort of overrule the federal magistrate judge uh, who made that initial decision in Las Vegas. It comes as no surprise. Democrats have had a lot to say about this. I want to share a bit of what Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin said earlier. I think the Smirnoff revelations destroy the entire case. I mean, Smirnoff was the foundation of the whole thing. He was the one who came forward to say that, um, th that Burisma had given Joe Biden $5 million, and that was just concocted out of thin air. Um, and so it was that foundation that the whole House of Cards has been built on, and the entire thing has collapsed. But of course, we don't even have to rely on Smirnoff's own words, because there have been somewhere near a dozen witnesses who have completely repudiated and refuted these essential allegations. Ryan, you said it a moment ago, even Jim Jordan has said this was the heart of the case against the Bidens. So now that the heart has basically been ripped out of the body, What's left? It's, it's a good question. You know, if this was a court of law, obviously, all, I mean, this case would never would have gotten to trial in the first place, right? This case would never have been brought in the first place. But, you know, certainly if it had gotten to that stage, it would have been tossed out. This guts the entire thing, right? You're saying this guy lied. But, you know, you can just look and compare what Republicans were saying at the time when they thought this was so important with what they're saying now. Of course, now they're saying it's not so important after all. We've got all this other stuff. But, you know, you can just look back at what they said and just use your own brain and, you know, listen to what they actually said at the time about how important this was. And then, you know, judge for yourself whether or not there's much else there to go with because they really emphasize just how incredibly important this was over and over and over and over again. Uh, and now we come to find out that 
you know, this was something that was just made up back in 2020. It really is an extraordinary set of events. And in any other uh, place but politics, you would have uh, people who are pretty probably deeply embarrassed. But, you know, you're not going to hear, obviously, Jim Jordan coming out and giving uh, an apology to the president of the United States for uh, spreading some of these sort of baseless lies about him. Isn't that absurd and funny and not funny and brutal and horrible all at the same time? I want to bring Molly and Barr back in there. Ryan saying it in a tongue in cheek way in any other venue, in any arena, it would be humiliating but not in politics, which in, in theory should be where one holds it to him or herself in the highest regard. Well, and there was a time when uh, when these Congress people would resign in disgrace, right? I mean, but even, now we live shame free in D.C. Right, exactly. <laughs> but even I mean, you'll remember even Richard Nixon resigned. So look, th this was always a vibes based impeachment. They were always trying to find a high crime and misdemeanor. A vibes vibes based, based impeachment. impeachment. I really yes. like that. Thank you. Um, but they were always trying to find a high crimes and misdemeanor. They could never really find one they got one it got debunked and now in a normal world these people would resign constitutional scholars have been talking about vibes based impeachments for decades i really do like that barb how do prosecutors begin to verify the claims of somebody connected to russian intel russian intelligence who now admits to pushing lies like you're a prosecutor what do you even do with that Yes, you know, it's the reason that it is so reckless to take unverified information, as the House Republicans did, and try to base an impeachment on that. Christopher Wray, the head of the FBI, had come out earlier to say this is information that was unconfirmed and unverified. And so what I believe David Weiss did here, the special prosecutor who is investigating this case, is to try to confirm the statements that the informant was making. And some of the ways you do that, for example, they did what they did here is they tried to compare his own travel records with times he said he was in Russia meeting with people. And they concluded that those times didn't match up. And so the things that he was saying could not be independently verified. And in fact, the, the records they did have refuted those things. And so without any basis, in fact, uh, they are, have now charged him with coming forward to the FBI and making false statements. And let me also say this, Stephanie, sometimes informants make information, make statements, and you can't verify it. You say it's unconfirmed, and you just write it off. You know, we, we're not going to charge him with a crime, but we're not going to act on this because we think this is information that's not verifiable. To charge somebody with a crime means that the prosecutor believes that they can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt that it is affirmatively false, not simply that it is unconfirmed, but that it is indeed false. And so these allegations mean that a prosecutor has reviewed this evidence and found that there is evidence that these claims are false. Molly, I am so immature. I couldn't get past the fact that this man's name is Smirnoff. <laughs> but beyond that, well, I mean, for, like you can't make it like for real. His name is, I, I was sure it was code. What was your reaction when you learned that this informant in just the past few months was peddling lies that could impact our election, which, as you heard, is happening in 258 days. Yeah, I mean, look, it's very scary, but I think also, more importantly, Fox News has been selling this story for since it's come out. And Sean Hannity has done numerous monologues on it. Now it's debunked. Like, I don't think now that... it's debunked. And what are they doing with it now? Right. And nobody is, you know, if we I mean, if if past is prologue, which it usually is, uh, Fox News is not saying we were wrong. We've been corrected. This was not true. You know, they're just moved on to something else. So you're going to have a part of the country that does not know this was debunked. There's a pretty significant part of this country that will never hear the, the sort of the, the ending of this story.